So we're going to construct another force diagram. Now just a reminder about the steps when creating force diagrams. The first step, or rather the zeroth step, is to sketch the system and its surroundings. This step is necessary if a picture is not included for us. But the first thing we should do when actually constructing a force diagram is to identify what the system is by drawing a system boundary. Then after that, we identify the coordinate axes in order to represent the motion of the object, identify the forces acting on the object, scale them appropriately to represent the relative magnitude of the forces, and then write the summation equation that explains whether the forces are balanced or unbalanced. So for this example, we're drawing a force diagram for a softball player who is slowing as she slides into the base. So this player is traveling to the right while she is approaching home base. So the first thing I'm going to do is to specify whether or not there is an acceleration based off of the kinematic variables that I'm provided within the problem. Now the problem doesn't give me any numbers, but what it is telling me is that she is slowing down. So I know she's traveling to the right, so she has some rightward velocity. However, she's traveling to the right but slowing down. That means that her velocity is changing, which means there's some acceleration in the opposite direction of motion, which is why I'm saying there's some leftward acceleration. Now this is going to be important because that means that our forces are going to be unbalanced and they need to be unbalanced pointing to the left to explain that acceleration. So. I'm now identifying my system boundary, which is just going to be the softball player. I shrink that system down to a single dot. The first force that I'm going to be putting on there after I've identified the coordinate planes is going to be the force of gravity. It's the type of force, gravity, acting on the player by the Earth. So especially when we're first getting practice with free body diagrams, I would recommend trying to identify the type of force as well as the two objects that cause the interaction that is the force. So force gravity on player by earth. Now the other forces I know that are going to be there, one that is rather important is going to be the normal force. I know that the only thing interacting with this player besides the pull of the earth is going to be what the player is touching, which is the ground. Now, the ground can exert a push up on the player. Now, in this case, we know that because there's no vertical acceleration, that upward push from the ground on the player needs to be equal in magnitude to the force of gravity in order to explain those balanced forces. Now, this type of force is going to be a normal force. That's why my label is force normal on player by ground. The size represents the same amount of force in the opposite direction as the force of gravity to balance it out. Now the ground can al also exert a pull on the player as well as a push. It is pushing up on the player because the player is compressing the ground downwards, but also it can pull the player back, which is going to be that force of friction. It's the force of friction acting on the player by the ground. Now, this will explain the acceleration to the left if this is the only force that we have on our x-axis. Now, the player is moving to the right. We may be tempted to include a force pointing in the direction of motion. However, if we wanted to do so, we would need to explain what two objects, the player and what else, is causing that rightward force. We don't have anything touching this player besides the ground and the non-contact force, which is the pull of the earth. We have already explained with these two forces how the ground is interacting with the player. That means that we cannot have the ground exert a third type of force applying in the exact opposite direction to the force it's already applying. This means that despite the player traveling to the right, we do not have a force to the right. This means we can clean up that free body diagram to just show the three forces we have interacting on this person, getting rid of that coordinate plane, and then write the summation equation. Our sum of the forces on the x-axis is just going to be the force of friction. The reason why I'm making this negative is by default, I typically say that if the object is moving, the direction of travel is the positive direction, and then the direction, well, opposite of travel is the negative. 
Because the player is traveling to the right and the friction force vector is pointing to the left, that's why I'm specifying it's a negative force of friction. Now, some of the forces vertically is the force normal minus the force gravity, and that's zero newtons. Because there's no motion up or down, I'm just going with a default up is positive, down is negative. Um, but mathematically, we would end up with the exact same results if we ended up saying that down were positive and up were negative. It would just swap what the signs were, but overall, the sum of the forces vertically should still be zero newtons.